guys. This is going to be your first supplemental instruction video. And I like to do, sometimes you'll see teachers do voiceovers on PowerPoints. I like to do these just because it makes me feel like it's more of a face-to-face -face class because we're getting, not really to interact, but you're getting to actually see who I am and um, hear me kind of talk about some of these things. So um, this information I'm gonna give you, I'm just pulling out of an additional textbook and a lot of it's gonna coordinate with what you're learning in your other textbook, but there might be some extra stuff in there. So as I told you in the introductory video, make sure you're taking notes and keeping that paper with you when you go to take the actual exam, not the quizzes, but the exam, um, because it will help It will help with the questions that come from this material if you already have that stuff written down because you're not going to have time to go back and rewatch this video while you're trying to take your exam. So um, basically your first chapter that you're discussing is kind of all about an introductory to fitness, wellness, health, um, all of that kind of stuff combined. Um, and so some of the stuff I'm going to pull out of this other textbook is very similar. Um, but these are the things I really want you to kind of make sure you know. Uh, I'm just going to start by giving you guys a couple questions and answers to kind of get us going, and then I'll kind of walk you guys through some of the information. So the first question is, which of the following lifestyle factors in is the leading preventable cause of death for Americans. And your choices are excess alcohol consumption, cigarette smoking, or obesity. And the answer is smoking. So smoking causes about 500,000 deaths per year. Um, obesity is responsible for more than 100,000 and alcohol is about 85,000. So just remember smoking is the answer to that. Um, do the terms health and wellness mean the same thing? No, they do not. And you will see that in just a second. I'll actually give you the kind of the, the major difference that so you can understand that. Uh, which of the following health-related issues affects the greatest number of college students each year? So that's important. Uh, stress, holds flu, sore throat, sleep problems, and concern for a friend or family member. And the question or the answer is stress. And it's about 32% of college students suffer so much stress that it affects their academic performance. And that's important for you guys to, for you guys to know. Um, so getting into some of the basic information, one of them relates right back to that question we talked about. Health is more, I don't want to say out of your control, but health can be determined by things like genetics or... Um, your age, your family history, some of those things that might not necessarily fully be in your control. And um, it's kind of your overall body, mind uh, condition, I guess. Now, wellness is a little bit of a newer term that we use. And really the kind of the big thing about wellness is that's more about the decisions you make. So, are you choosing to smoke? Are you choosing to live a lifestyle where you're obese? Um, some of those type of things. Now, keep in mind something like obesity, there might be a little bit of a genetic component. But basically what they're saying is um, health is going to be a little bit more beyond your control, whereas wellness should be much more in your control. Um, because even if you have something like, let's say, cancer, maybe... Well, not maybe, but you you can adjust your diet to try to help those things and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Something else you want to know is that there are dimensions of wellness. And so these are all components that we say make up how to live a good wellness life. And some of them you might not have even thought of. The physical is pretty common sense because we, at this point, everybody pretty much knows they, they probably should exercise and they should, they should eat healthy. Um, so there is that physical component, fitness, um, nutrition, things like that. Emotional wellness. You're starting to see a big push for this. We know that mental health and our emotional wellness is very important, our emotional stability. Um, then you have intellectual wellness, which you probably wouldn't even think of as a component, 
but it really is um there is this thought that we need to keep learning and we need to keep using our brain especially as we get older and that's how we can we can live a you know they say quality of life versus quantity of life um interpersonal wellness interaction with others it is actually important to have that social component sometimes you'll, you'll hear it called social wellness a social component where you have supportive people around you and you live in a supportive environment and that's very very important um spiritual wellness so that doesn't necessarily mean a certain religion or anything like that it just means some type of guiding beliefs values um where you have some meaning and some purpose in your life and then you have environmental wellness which again a lot of people wouldn't think of but that is a component and that is you know what is it like around us do we live in pollution are we living in um do we have food supply do we those types of things that is a component of our wellness so physical emotional intellectual interpersonal spiritual environmental okay um some of the some terminology um just know you their infectious disease might be a, a term you come across and that is some type of disease that can spread from person to person that can be things like pneumonia tuberculosis uh, diarrhea it can be things you know um it's usually it can be caused by bacteria by viruses so keep that in mind um one additional kind of component of wellness that you might see people talk about a little bit but if we didn't mention in the core ones is financial wellness because we're starting to talk about how important that is to kind of our well-being and that makes sense um or even our occupational wellness you know um our work environment our work lifestyle so um keep those in mind if you see chronic disease chronic just means long term um it develops it's going to continue over a long period of time something like cancer something like heart disease uh obviously a lifestyle choice is just you picking a certain way to live um and that can be something like choosing to smoke or exercising or not exercising or things like that um leading cause of death remember this doesn't say preventable like we did in the other question but the actual leading cause of death in the united states is heart disease um, i'll just give you the top three so you kind of know heart disease is number one cancer is number two and stroke is number three um, and obviously all of our lifestyle factors play a huge part in that so um, diet inactive lifestyle smoking and excess alcohol all four are components of those top three of, of helping create those top three death issues so keep that in mind um let's see actual there's another there's another table in here so i'm just gonna throw you guys some more kind of statistics actual causes of death among americans um the top one in this category is tobacco 440,000, obesity and then alcohol consumption which that relates to that very first question or one of those th first three questions that we had. So remember again, it's gonna go tobacco, tobacco obesity, alcohol. Um, physical fitness, just what you, that the physical effort that you put in. Um, if you hear the word sedentary, that means not being physically active. That usually means like sitting, um, but we kind of, we, Kind of broaden that to just say if you're if you lead an inactive lifestyle it's a sedentary lifestyle um we want to remember incre increase quality of life not quantity of life because who wants to live to be 100 years old if 50 of those are spent you know in a nursing home where you can't even bathe yourself and things like that so really that's kind of part of what this class is about is helping us all to create better quality of life in ourselves and maybe in others if we you know put that information out there um healthy people 2010 is kind of a initiative that they had they had all these objectives um i'm just going to give you the you know i'm just going to give you two of them just so you can kind of see an example 
increased the proportion of people age 18 and older who engaged regularly in moderate physical activity. And um, here's another one. Increase the proportion of people age two and older who consume at least three daily servings of vegetables with at least one third being dark green or orange vegetables. So pretty specific in some of what they're trying to initiate in the population to make us healthier. And um, if, those, if that interests you, you can always look those up online. Um, I think they might have some in your current textbook. I can't remember if there's a chart in there like there is in this one, though. Um, I'd have to go back and look. So let's see. What else? Um, what do we want to do to be to have a, a better wellness lifestyle? We know we want to be physically active. We need to have a healthy diet, maintain a healthy body weight, manage stress. Like we talked about stress earlier. Um, avoiding tobacco, drugs, alcohol, keeping, keeping yourself safe from disease and injury as much as you can. Um, having good relationships, all of those types of things that we kind of talked about in those components. Um, let's see. What else? What else do I want you guys to know? Um, part of what you guys are going to do in your behavior modification worksheet that you submit is choosing target behaviors. And so for that, that for you, that can be anything. It could be, I want to eat more vegetables. It could be, I want to stop smoking. It could be, um, I want to exercise 30 minutes a day. Whatever it is, you're, it gives you, I think, three you're supposed to try to pick. It could be something very small. It could be something a little bit bigger. But you just want to make sure that you are making goals that are attainable. Don't, don't get crazy and um, be like, I'm going to work out two hours every day when you're not working out right now. Because that might not be a real, realistic. You know, you want to try to make steps where it's attainable, you can do it, and you can be successful, maybe reward yourself a little bit, and then and then continue on that path. Um, let's see. One of the things you guys are going to do in one of your discussions is talk about motivation and looking at how do you motivate yourself? How do we motivate others? How do we keep, make sure that some of those barriers don't get in our way? You know, um, one of the things, you know, a lot of people will say is, well, if I if I go home after work, I'm not going to go back to the gym, you know, because I don't want to leave my house again. So how do you eliminate that barrier? Well, you pack a bag and you take it with you to work and you go straight to the gym, you know. So there's there's things that we can discuss about how to make um, motivation a little bit easier and how to how to help that within ourselves and how to help that within other people. Um some of the terms you might see self-efficacy and basically in psychology and other classes, we say this is our confidence in being able to be successful at something at a particular task. Or so when we talk about it here, it might be how confident are we can um, exercise three times a week? How confident are we that we can eat a healthy diet? What is your self-efficacy in those specific tasks? Um, you might also see the term locus of control, and all that really means is where do we put the control in our lives? Is it, do I blame things that happen internally? Do I say it's for me, I have control over that, or do I blame things outside of me um, that, and say, oh, I don't have control of that, I can't control that um, situation? So... If you, if you think you have control of your own life, that's an internal uh, locus of control. If you think things outside of yourself can kind of determine your course of life or the things you're doing, that's more of an external locus of control. Um, role models are good. If you can find somebody that's going to be a good role model in this, you know, your fitness journey, your nutrition journey, whatever it is, uh, sometimes visualization. Sometimes self-talk, talking positively to yourself. Um, you know, they have stages. They talk about stages of change. So are you in pre-contemplation where you haven't really even thought about it much? Are you in contemplation? Are you actually in preparation where you're preparing to change this behavior? Are you in the action stage, maintenance stage, or termination stage? And so there's different, different stages um, one of the things they talk about is if you do happen to relapse, let it go. It's 
going to be fine. Um, what else? Uh, if you see the term smart about talking about your goals, uh, that's kind of what I was saying. So the S is being specific, making sure you know exactly what you're trying to accomplish. M is measurable. How are you going to measure that goal? Uh, a is attainable. Remember, I said it's got to be something that you can actually do. Realistic. Is it realistic for you, for your lifestyle, for your your time that you have available? And then time frame specific. So am I going to do it in two weeks? Am I going to do it in a month? Um, things like that. Keep that in mind. Um, what else? What else? One of the things it does talk about is some and in some of your barriers and how to stay with it. Um, some of the things that you don't want to do, three keywords, procrastinating, rationalizing, and blaming. So we want to try to stay clear of those. We do not want to procrastinate. We do not want to rationalize why we're not doing it, or we don't want to blame um, someone or something for why we're not doing what we're trying to do. And that's pretty much it. So I'm trying to keep these around 15 minutes. I know this one went 16. Sorry. But um, again, make sure you took notes on some of the terminology, on some of the questions, on some of the lists. And hopefully that will make your exam much easier if you have those notes in front of you.